All right, hey, what's up guys? Alex here with Tool Rev, and today we are looking at the 15 and 18 gauge trim nailers from DeWalt. These are the two size nailers that I use to trim houses inside and out. I've shot thousands of nails through both of these particular guns, and I've learned a few things that can help you decide if they might be the right nailers for you, regardless of what battery platform you're on. So let's check them out. Let's start with the biggest gripe that I and many people have with these guns, which is the noise that they make. So these have brushless motors that spin a track that engages the drive pin to shoot the nails. I don't know if it's the whole motor that turns or just the track spins, but this is the noise that they make. <laughs> It takes about 18 seconds for this to wind down after you shoot a nail. So if, for example, you're installing some baseboard and you want to shoot a nail every few seconds, you're going to have to listen to the noise the whole time where other cordless nailers currently offered on the market are silent, like these Gen 2 Milwaukee's. This 15 here uses a nitrogen air spring to shoot the nails, which is silent until you pop off a nail and then it's immediately silent again. Now the downside to these is they do add some bulk and weight to the front of the gun. You can see here the DeWalt is thinner up front. It has more reach and it has an inline uh, magazine where this one is off to the side. I've weighed both of these with their respective five amp hour batteries and the Milwaukee with a five amp hour battery weighs 8.3 pounds and the DeWalt weighs 7.2 pounds and likewise the 18 gen 2 you can see here the milwaukee is actually smaller and they're both they both have about the same uh reach but the weight as far as the weight goes the milwaukee with its 5 amp hour battery weighs 7.3 pounds and the dewalt weighs 6.1 pounds so lighter overall these are self-serviceable, meaning you can go to DeWalt's parts website and you can get everything from the motor to the outer clamshell on these and everything in between, where Milwaukee doesn't even list the part numbers for most of the stuff on these guns because of the compressed air uh, mechanisms they want you to send it in for service. Another thing I like about these DeWalt's over the Milwaukee's is they have no on-off switch. So you throw the battery on and these are just on and all you have to do is set them to single or bump fire mode, which mine are almost always in bump fire mode because you can single fire in bump fire mode, but you can't bump fire in single fire mode. These do have a safety lockup button right here for the trigger. And then they have dual work lights to light up your work area. They have a reversible belt hook on these, nice belt hook. Uh, there is extra tip storage on the 15 right here and extra tip storage on the 18 right here. They both have a toolless uh, adjustment for depth of drive, which is the button's fine. It's just okay. It's not great, but it works okay. This 15 has really good action on the pusher. I like it. You can grab it from both sides. And so another thing I like is when you pull it all the way down, it locks itself down, which is good if you had a nail jam. And I'll tell you, these two guns rarely ever jam. But if you do have a jam, they have a toolless jam clearance. Um, so you just drop your nails and pull off your battery and then you just pop the hood right here and you can pull out your jammed nail. If it's not a jammed nail and you have a striker jam where the drive pin is stuck, uh, you, these have a stall release right here to free that. So this has a pencil sharpener. Where is it? Right there. And then it has a 16 on center guide. So you have from here to the tip is 16 on center. And so I guess if you're doing some baseboard, you can start in the corner and go 16 on center, tap, tap, and then run down the line. If you trust that the framer did a good job. So we have a two by four piece of half inch drywall, and then we have some oak trim here. This is actually oak stair tread, I think. Um, and we're going to drop in some two inch 18 gauge nails into the 18. And this can take five eighths to two and one eighth inch nails. And then the 15 takes one and a quarter to two and a half inch nails. So we're going to drop in some two and a half inch, oops, drop in some two and a half inch nails there. And one misconception with these guns is that you need to let them rev up before you, to get full power to shoot a nail. Initially in bump fire, you have to let it rev up a little bit to get it going, but then you can just pat, 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 and you'll see that right here. So let's go ahead and take this and put it in bump fire and then we'll drive some nails. Man, you got to remember to wear your hearing protection, especially with the uh, Milwaukee's, man. But 
Definitely you want hearing protection with these. Now let's take the 15 and we have it in bump drive and let's do the same thing. Are we gonna go through here? What do we got? Inch and a half, two inches. Yeah, these actually might drive all the way through. So bump drive. Not working very good, is it? Hmm. You know, let's put it on the floor. All right, so on the floor, we're gonna turn these all the way up. So if you pull the tip all the way in, that drives the nail deeper. And let's just try to bump drive on there. Oops, holy shit. Wow, that never happened before. I just shot a nail. I guess I've never tried this test before. Let's try the Milwaukee and see what happens. Bump drive. Wow, look at that. On this test, the Milwaukee, I mean, I'm telling you, I've never had any problems shooting this. Uh, Walt anywhere but on this test right here bouncing around on these pieces of wood the Milwaukee had no problem let's try the DeWalt's again so let me try to hit it a little straighter maybe okay so that's really what it, it was that was too angled I'm not hitting it straight on and uh, so I think it was my fault here you can see the 18s these sunken nails right here these are the 18, the two inch 18s. You see the first one didn't drive. Uh, it's a little bit proud. And that's like I'm saying the first nail, you need to kind of give it a second. And then after that, it's just, you know, tap, tap, tap. You don't really have to slow down and wait for it to rev up. All these are the failed, my failed attempts to sink the two inch DeWalt's. And then I grabbed the Milwaukee right here and I didn't have to think about it at all. Just sank them all in. But then with a little more thought and hitting the DeWalt with the right angle, you can see it did sink the two inches. They're not as sunk as well as the, the Milwaukee's here, but they did go right through. So that is it, what it is. And I will tell you that in real world testing uh, or usage, I've never had a problem with uh, either one of the DeWalt's sinking nails. It really doesn't matter what battery platform you're on. With if, you don't, if you're not afraid to use battery adapters, I myself was running these DeWalt's and then I switched to the, I grabbed this uh, Milwaukee 18 and because it was quiet and it's, it was a little more forgiving as far as not leaving tip marks in um, soft pine, I started carrying these two guns and I was running this off an adapter. So, you know, you can get these adapters on Amazon and uh, I was running my Milwaukee's on DeWalt batteries. So I had this situation going on for a while. If I leave in the morning with a fully charged Milwaukee battery on the bottom of these things, I can just leave the batteries on them all day and they last all day. Same thing with the DeWalt guns. They will run all day on one battery, one five amp hour battery. I still do use and like these DeWalt guns, but after that little test right there, I think that really shows uh, these Milwaukee's uh, make it a little easier to get things done. So that's my review of the DeWalt guns. I hope this helped you out. And if it did, consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one.